There are many television shows, radio shows, and so forth that focus on the talent of man. In my country and in many countries, uh, talent is at a high price. Not just thousands, but millions will be paid uh, for those who are highly talented. A ball player will receive millions each year for their skill. It's not to take away from the skill of an individual or their hard work in being a talented person and refining their talent. But when the emphasis is on the talent of man and we praise and actually worship and give great amount of money to athletes and musicians and so forth, way beyond uh, the value of their talent, uh, and we ignore the Word of God, and we shift our attention from very talented people that are out there, we are apt to make a mistake, not taking away the value that they contribute to people around the world or anywhere. But when that is our emphasis, to delight in talent, to look for solutions from talented people, to listen to what they say beyond the realm of their talent, then we are badly mistaken, shifting from truth, truth in God's Word, to such skilled individuals is a great mistake. God's Word is a constant. Talented people come, mostly in their youth, provide some entertainment, and fade away in their older years, and all eventually die. Talent is a wonderful thing. I think we ought to develop our talent individually as God's people to as much as possible that we can with the limited time and scope that we have. But not to trust in entertainment talent. Talent, talent it comes and goes. Again, this is what the Lord says. This is the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Instead, you walk away from it. Instead of revival and to get away from rebellion, we must do this according to this verse. First of all, we must repent of our rebellion. We have not acknowledged our rebellion because it hasn't been overt. But it's these subtle shifts from the promises of God, from the power of God, from the truth of God, away to lesser things. That is the rebellion. It's a subtle thing, and we must recognize it and call it what it is, a subtle kind of rebellion, and repent, turn from it. Admit to God that we've been on a wrong path of trusting man and our devices. And then we must rest from saving ourselves. As I said in one of the earlier lectures, we rest, we enter the rest of God. That means we're entering, enter, entering into the perfect work of God completed in Christ Jesus. Trying to save ourselves with our efforts, our talents, is a form of rebellion itself. When God has provided the way to perfection, we must take His plan of salvation, nothing less. But this constant effort to sanctify ourselves and think that we can make ourselves holy enough before God is also a mistake. As an elderly, wise gentleman who believed in the Lord for years said, we are great at receiving salvation by grace, but then we go on to work at our sanctification as if there were no grace involved in the process. The process of refining us is one in partnership and cooperation with God Almighty. Yes, we must obey in this process of being sanctified, made holy, but he's the one who will ultimately work out that sanctification. And it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 that He will sanctify us wholly. It'll be a work of God, and we cooperate with that work. And ultimately, He will complete what he's, that which He's begun in us, as said in Philippians chapter 1. Well, rest from saving ourselves, or even thinking that we can sanctify ourselves on our own by ourselves. We quiet ourselves to hear God. We stop all the noise, we shut down all the devices that bring noise to our heads and ears, the constant chatter and talk of man. We shut it down to listen to God. God still speaks today, for mostly in His Word, but He's apt to point out to you verses that apply to you directly. 
And I'm all too afraid that this verse is one that God is speaking to the generations of believers today. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, the Holy One of Israel. Repentance and rest is your salvation, and quietness and trust is your strength. But you're shoving it aside. I believe this is a voice from God today, a universal text that we must go back to that is always available to us and always been there, but we have pushed it aside. And we must trust in God's plan. God has a plan of perfecting us, refining us. God has a plan of using us on the, this earth while we have time. Trust in God step by step and we'll never know it apart from ending our revival, apart from resting in His salvation, apart from quietness to hear His voice that corrects and directs us, apart from trust in His plan. And trust precedes rest, as we've said again and again. Well, let's look on to see what happens and, and the good things that can come as we trust. And Lois, if you'll read on from 18 through 22 and we finish the chapter. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. O people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Then you will defile your idols overlaid with silver and your images covered with gold. You will throw them away like a menstrual cloth and say to them, Away with you! He will also send you rain for the seed you sow in the ground, and the food that comes from the land will be rich and plentiful. In that day your cattle will graze in broad meadows, the oxen and donkeys that work the soil will eat fodder and mash, spread out with fork and shovel. In the days of great slaughter, when the towers fall, streams of water will flow on every high mountain and every lofty hill. The moon will shine like the sun, and the sunlight will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven full days, when the Lord binds up the bruises of his people, and heals the wounds he inflicted. Resting and rising. I've emphasized that this is not a class in monasticism. That is, cloisting ourselves away in some closet forever, never to come out, or to find a hill somewhere out there and gathering as a people to cut ourselves off from the mainstream of society. Rather, it is resting in Him and rising to enjoy the pleasures of God, the prosperity of God under His control. This is not a class on prosperity in the sense that we guarantee that if you follow God that you'll become prosperous and you'll be successful in the realm of the world. It may happen, but it may not. Success is seen as wise success, that which endures forever. Nevertheless, we see that God would prosper His people here, and He will prosper them wherever they do as commanded, remembering that their salvation is a matter of repentance. Each of us as believers needs to learn how to repent in a continuous fashion not over and over the same sins, but go whenever we have sinned and go to Him and ask for forgiveness, for He forgives greatly. And then, obviously, rest. Rest in Him. Rest because He is the one who's done great works and will continue to do great works. Rest and then we rise to live for Him accordingly, to do the hard things He asks us to do that we've been avoiding with our frenzy of activity, denying God 
the opportunity to work big things that he values in our lives and in the world. And then that quietness, quietness that we need before going back into the noisy world and impacting that world. And then simple trust. We cannot rest apart from trust. Are you rebelling in any of these ways? Ignoring any of these words? Are you like the, the Israelites of old saying, but we don't want it. No, thank you, please. I don't want that. I don't need it. I'll trust others. I'll trust the talent of man. I'll trust my own abilities. I don't need what this is all about. Well, this is a monumental verse, I believe. The Sovereign Lord, the Holy One, who invites us to be holy, says, in repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength, but you would have none of it. I pray this day that you will have Him. You will take Him. You will have much of it in changing the path and changing the way that have you, you've been functioning if you've neglected these very important things. For not just your life depends on it, but the world to be revived, beginning with His holy people, depends on our going to God with all things in all ways. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. It's been my pleasure to deliver these messages. Actually, it's the formation of thought throughout 60 years of my life. As I look in the past and I see that the hard things God has brought us through were very much the pleasure of His will to cause us to speak out and to bring out texts of the Bible that are forgotten, set aside for the frenzy of activity of trying to do His will apart from Him on our own. Let us pray. Lord God, I pray with any person who realizes that they have subtly been rebellious. They have not relied on your strength. And I know of those times in my own life where I try my own ways first, neglecting your promises, looking for human solutions. So we pray for rebellion to end by repenting of it acknowledging our wrong, our sorrowful ways, forgetting rest, that you work in activity, but you also work in rest, forgetting trust. We repent, O oh Lord, of our lack of quietness that comes about as we trust in you. I can't possibly imagine how you could use any of these lectures I can't imagine how you could bring them to fruition all around or anywhere. But you, O oh Lord, do so. Use them as you will, for they are in your word and from you by the Spirit of the Holy One, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father. So we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. End of session.